What's the best way to win your fantasy football league? It's to watch Fantasy Fluent right here. So make sure to subscribe, set your reminder so you don't miss an episode. So let's get to it with Fantasy Fluent. I'm Anthony K of Sports Fluent, and I'm here as always with the producer, Mike the Friend. Mike, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? My, so in my main league, like my main, main, main league, yeah, where I'm the commissioner, where like, you know, the, the big one. The big money one, the one where I know everybody, we draft on Thursday. We draft on Thursday, and um, so I'm 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 hype. Right? Like I, I I treat it like it's a real draft. Um, so I'm 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 ready for whatever questions we have for this week, and I w- I'm looking forward to. So to everybody out there, make sure to put in the comments, or uh, you can send them to Anthony K at SportsFluent.com. Send us your fantasy questions. We're going to answer them all here, but also you can check out TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. It's all right there. Sports underscore fluent is for all of those three. Send me your fantasy questions and I'll answer them there and uh, and bring some of them to the show. So what do we got this week, Mike? All right. So this is kind of a what would you do in this situation type of question. Okay. So if you were in a league where let's just say, you know, 12 team league and you had a top five pick, and you were looking to trade away that pick, you know, maybe to get some more guys, what would you be looking in return to, for that top five pick? What what do you what value do you think that pick has? Wow. Um, that's a great question. Um, if you could get – look, it, for me, I'm not, I'm not trading away my first-round pick personally, and that's because – I see a lot of value. I've, I've hit. I've been lucky. I've hit every time on my first round pick. But I know that there's people who are like, oh, every time I made a first round pick, it was you know Christian McCaffrey. He got hurt. It was Le'Veon Bell. He, yeah. yeah, yeah. Saquon Barkley got hurt. It was Le'Veon Bell. You know, he sat out a year. Uh, it was Zeke. He underperformed because Dak got hurt. So I get that. So I think if I'm trading away a first round pick, it needs to at minimum get me two picks in return, mm-hmm. and it needs to be two picks in the first three, four rounds, at least, at least, right? Because if you're, here's the thing. If you go out and tell people, hey, I want to trade the fifth pick overall, you're, you know, it's just like, it's just like real negotiations. You're not going to get what you're looking for. But if you're sitting there and you know, you know, it's going to be one of those things where if someone really is high on someone and you know, this is, this is where it comes into knowing your league. You know, you put it out there and say, hey, fifth pick, you know that's a, you know I've got in my league I know I've got two I think really really like diehard Cowboys fans. Now I'm unlucky. I lost in the final last year, so I'm the 11th pick because we do reverse Ooh. order of where you finished, Ooh. and so I'm 11th. So I don't have that problem of the fifth pick. But if I had the fifth pick and I talked to you know there's a guy True Blue right? He's just a diehard Cowboys fan. I know he wants Zeke. I know he wants Zeke. So yeah, I put it out there and say, hey, I know you really want Zeke. Why don't you give me your second and your fourth? Right now I have two, two, two second round picks, two fourth round picks. You know, I, I'm like that because I go I go deep into it and yeah, I'd, I'd feel comfortable doing something like that. I don't, but I don't, I don't like, uh, be honest, I don't like trading picks. So this is a bit of a personal question, but I have the second overall pick in my draft later tonight. And I've been getting, you know, requests for a couple twos. I've gotten a three, a three three or four and a five. And I don't like Dalvin cook is the pick number two. I don't think there's really any debate about that. So I'm thinking, all right, I can take Dalvin cook or I can get a, a bunch of really solid guys in the middle route. And I'm leaning towards just keeping the two and just banking on Dalvin cook, having just a baller season. But I do understand. Cause if Dalvin cook got to bed, he gets injured. I like, that's just such a terrible, that's so terrible for me. So, yeah. Here's what I, here's I'll give you. Let me I'll I'll just say, take Delvin Cook, unless someone yeah. else does something crazy. Yeah. Um, I told you a couple of weeks ago, don't be afraid of Alvin Kamara either. But I'm going to backpedal on what I said. Be afraid of Zeke because I'm not trusting Zach right now, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't take him that high. Um, but yeah, I go Delvin Cook, and that's a guy that can win you your league, right? Yeah. That's a guy who can win you your league. So I would say take the pick, take take Cook. But, but whoever it was that obviously wants Cook, that's why they want the second overall pick. 
keep them in mind. See what happens in their draft. Mm -hmm. And if you see two people that you're like, I think those two make my team, I mean, significantly better, make a move. Make a move after when you see what those picks look like. Um, but yeah, because I don't think you're going to find a better running back than Cook in the, you know, in the, what was it, a second and a fourth, you said? Yeah, I, I, I had second and a fourth. Yeah. After after I got. yeah, I'm not, you know, who are you take who are you taking in the second that's going to be, you know, comparable? Jonathan Taylor, Najee Harris, something close to that. Okay. And then in the fourth, what, like a James Robinson? Yeah. Here's the thing you probably get that guy anyways. It's not like you don't have, uh, you know. This is why fantasy is so different than real football. It's not. It's not like you don't have a second and a fourth. It's not like you're not going to have waiver wires. And if Delvin Cook uh, gets hurt, you're not going to pick up. Uh, is it still Madison that's his backup? I believe. Yeah, uh, Alexander Madison. All right, pick him off waivers or handcuff him. You can get him kind of undrafted. I'm sure really late. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in most leagues, depending on how big it is. So yeah, no, I, I say I say stick the pick. But like I said, I like. I like my I, – I enjoy drafting. Um, so I think uh, – especially first-round guys, personally. Not this All year, right. mind you. Not this year, number 11. I'm, I'm a little – Yeah. You I'd, ra- I'd rather pick 12th because that means I, I won the league. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the only time I'd rather pick low. Um, speaking of, you know, kind of looking at rounds and in value, quarterbacks. Everybody loves quarterbacks. But unfortunately, quarterbacks are not the best position to pick in in fantasy football. So, what round are you going to be targeting quarterbacks, and what quarterbacks do you think will be available in that round? I'm as I told you, my draft is Thursday, so I've been doing this because I've been working on a no QB draft mm-hmm. and seeing how late I can get a quality quarterback. So to do that. What I did was I pulled up the last last few seasons, but I'll give you an example of last season. And it's on a this per game basis. And the difference is about a hundred and something points divided up by however many weeks. But on average, the number one QB averaged 25 points something, depending on your scoring. I'm just gonna round it, about 25 points per game. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna let you guess if you haven't looked this up already. The number 10 quarterback. How many points did they average per game? 22. 22 is the correct answer. I didn't look that up. Wow. That's a, You're dead on. It's 22 and change, whatever. So where the drop-off comes is quarterback 11 and 12, where there's a four-point drop-off from there. So to think from position one to position 10, there's only a three-point per game swing. And in the... Places 11 and 12, there's a four-point swing. So in two spots, it drops by four, whereas in the 10 earlier spots, it only dropped by three. When you look at now who those guys were, Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, Aaron Rodgers. I'm I'm skipping a few here for for a reason. Your guy, Russell Wilson, Ryan Tannehill, Tom Brady, Justin Herbert. So seven of the top 10, where were those guys drafted last year? They weren't drafted early. And when you and so when you put in Mahomes, who was number four, Watson number five, and Lamar Jackson, who was number ten, those guys were drafted in some cases first, second, third round. Now, guys, we're talking in a one QB league. It is different for a super flex and two QB league. So this is a one QB league. So so your chances of hitting on a quarterback later in the top ten was actually better. Seven out of the ten were drafted later. In the later rounds, number eleven and twelve were Kirk Cousins and, and Matt Ryan, who you could probably get anytime you wanted to in the draft. So again, don't. This might be for everything, and, and we might talk about this a little bit later. But with quarterbacks, don't reach for a quarterback if there's someone better, right? So if you're if you're drafting and you know what your ever your board looks like, and you say, hey, ah. I, I don't want to draft this guy in the in the fifth round, let's say, but the quarterback you want is there, right? And they're one of those top 10 QBs that you think are going to finish at least top 10 in fantasy this year. Then, okay, go ahead and take them fifth round, sixth round. I'm not a fan of that because, like I said, I can get value later. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, if there's nobody else, 
Okay, but if you see, hey, there's a steal at running back, there's a steal at wide receiver. Uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I, like you know me, I don't like tight ends or defenses, kickers. Like leave all those things to the end. Load up on running backs, load up on wide receivers because that's what you need the most of. And there will be a quarterback in later rounds. So to ask to answer the second part of your question, I'm going to take the best available quarterback after I've seen maybe the first six or seven come off the board. So I'm probably not taking a quarterback until round eight, nine, ten, maybe. Wow. Because I, because I'll tell you right now, with my last pick in the draft, non kicker defense, who are always my last two rounds, I can heck, I can wait. I can only take one quarterback. And then look at my team and say, ah, I didn't actually like this pick and drop him and pick up Jameis Winston because no one's even drafting Jameis Winston. And guess what? He's going to be a top 15 quarterback this year. Period. He might even be top 10. I, I might even I might even be undervaluing him oh and saying top 15. He might be a top 10 quarterback. You know what? Actually, I'll go out and say it. Jameis Winston will be a top 10 fantasy quarterback this year. And if so, why do you need to draft someone higher? Now, I'll tell you for me, because I like to play it safe. I'm going to draft a quarterback, like I said, in rounds eight through 10. And then I'm going to take just like Jameis Winston at the end, or like I said, pick him up and drop somebody later um, when I'm rounding out my team. Between this Thursday and next Thursday's game, you know, I'll make a few tweaks. I'll make maybe it's a couple of trades. Like maybe they're like maybe I, you know, the only other option. Is if like a Patrick Mahomes, a Lamar Jackson, a, I don't think Josh Allen, Josh Allen will drop. But if one of those guys drops in my league, and I will say my league is is notorious for taking quarterbacks too early. But if one of those guys drops, I'll pick him up. I'll pick him up. I'll go early. I'll pick him up in the third round. But I, I'm only doing it because I know I'm going to then trade him for one of your running backs or wide receivers that you picked up in the first or second round that I really want, and then I'm going to go pick up. Winston off, off of waivers, and I'm going to be laughing all the way to the championship. And I do it every single year where I do stuff like that, um, and and it and it works if you find trade partners, right? So I'm I'm not that high on taking quarterbacks high. Like I said, unless unless one of those three guys slips into the third fourth round, which in most leagues, unfortunately, they they don't. People who know what they're doing don't take quarterbacks early. Like here, I had Josh. Listen, I, I get, granted, I fell a little bit short, but I had Josh Allen last year. Where do you think I got Josh Allen? Six, eighth round, tenth. Eighth round? Oh my God, no way! <laughs> no one was, no one was taking Josh Allen. No one was taking Josh Allen. So, so it's it's that thing. People still don't believe in Josh Allen. That that's the funny in real football. They still don't. This guy's gonna take his team to a Super Bowl, and challenge right the chiefs and patrick mahomes this season and they've got a legitimate shot at going to super bowl and people still underestimate how good josh allen is and in fantasy how good he is so you know is there is there specific quarterbacks you're you're curious about or because when you say target right like i'll tell you i'll go back to my list from last year josh allen i'm not going to get because he's going to go too early but kyler murray is going to be very gettable aaron Rodgers is coming with a chip on his shoulder kind of his farewell tour I say Aaron, angry Aaron Rodgers is one of the best athletes of all time. Yeah, he's he's like that mean mug LeBron. You know when LeBron gives that that death stare, like you know you're in trouble. Um, so I, I, Rodgers, you can get late. Russell Wilson, I think you get him right where you're supposed to get him. I think he's like yeah. fifth round, and, I, and I'm okay with I'm okay with that because I just what I worry about is that offensive line in Seattle too, right? So. Uh, again, it also depends on your, how your scoring works, too. Keep that in mind. Ryan Tannehill, you could still get pretty late. No one's going to be picking up Tom Brady because everybody says, oh, it's the end. It's the end for Tom Brady. Next, no it's the Max Kellerman effect. He's yeah, so, ta- so, so you could take him. Justin Herbert will probably go a little higher uh, than last year, so you're probably not going to get him. Um, but like I said, they're Kirk Cousins, not Kirk Cousins. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick has some weapons. Um and, th- and now you got to look at last week we talked about rookie QBs and I told you the only one I would draft and it would be as a backup is Zach Wilson. Now you got to think about Mac Jones. Mac Jones is going to, ha- you know, now that they've right. cut, cut Cam Newton, um, Mac Jones is the starter. You know, he's, he's going to be, look, he's not going to be Brady esque. That's even, that's even an order. He's gonna be like Brady light. Um, so yeah. he's going to, he's going to put up fantasy numbers um, and probably real numbers too. I think, 
I think you're safe with, with even two. So that's what I'm saying is there's so many out of the 32 quarterbacks that are going to start, you know, this, there, there's 20 that you'll be fine with in fantasy. I was, yeah. I was also Again, gonna, barring, barring injury, barring, barring injury. I was going to say, too, you know, some of these rookies or some of these, you know, backups right now, you can always pick up on the waiver wire. Matt Nagy announces just Phil starting. You get on that waiver wire right yeah, away. Pick him up. Yeah, 100%. So, I, I, I would pick quarterbacks a little earlier, but I, I definitely see what you're saying. You know, the, the fact that you got Josh Allen in the 10th round, that's just that was incredible. That was a great pick last year. Oh, I knew, I knew, I knew he slipped. I, everyone was like Buffalo because everyone thought, you know what, it's Buffalo. And maybe, you know what though, I, I did lose with him. So, but there was a lot of it's Buffalo. Come the playoffs, it's gonna be snow, right? The people overthink it, and they're like, oh, the you know the matchups, and and yes, you need to think about matchups a little bit. But just because the defense was great last year, you're putting all your money in that. Hey, I'm not gonna draft this guy. For, for you know, because I think in week 16 when I'm playing in the championship that um, he's going against a Rams defense that's supposed to be amazing, as an example, right? right. That's a lot of – that's overthinking if, if you ask me. Yeah. All right. I, 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 I can see where you're coming from there with the quarterbacks. Obviously, you know, sometimes I, I see Russell Wilson on the board, fifth or sixth round. I just – I feel so tempted I have to pick him up. But I, I get it. I, 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 I get where you're coming from there. So I think my last question, and this is kind of just a, a personnel stylistic type of question. Part of the fun of fantasy football is, is having cool league names. And you mentioned, you know, you're the commissioner in one of your leagues. Um, so there's some cool league names with NFL player puns that you could have. So I have assembled a list of just some of the league names that I have seen recently. And I want to get your opinion on it. So I think I have one, two, three, four. I have like 10 to 12 right here. And, you know, I just kind of, just give it a number score of one out of ten about how you know kind of creative it is. So first one I have is mixing it up, Joe Mixon. Okay, yeah, Mix, cool. mixing it up. Yeah. So let me let me ask this question as you go through this list. So do you have do you feel you have a player on your team to use that name? I I feel like I feel like you would have to have the player on your team. Absolutely, it okay. just it wouldn't make sense. Okay, um, and then question two. How do you feel about people changing their names throughout the season? Or should you pick your stick with it? You can change your name. You can change your name, I feel like. Because I, I will say that there's one guy in my league that changes his name every single week based on his opponent. So if you were, let's say, mixing it up, right, he yeah. he would pick a name that like, almost re, is almost like a rebuttal. To mixing it up, right? Mixing it up, but your dough is flat. You know what I mean? Like he would put that name, like he would put something against against the name. So I was just, I was just curious about that because I'm like, oh man, that's a lot of work. So okay, mixing it up, a score of one to ten. I like it. I, I'll give it a, I give it a six and a half. All right. What about uh, the real Slim Brady? I, you know, <laughs> I like that. I'll give, I'll give that one an eight. I, it made me laugh, so I would give that. I, I, Anything Brady. I was, I was, a, so for my most of my leagues, my main league, uh, I've always been since, you know, I don't, I don't know how long I started playing 10 years ago. Um, I've always been stroking my Ditka. <laughs> right? Go back to being a Bears fan, oh my Ditka, God. the coach. So that's oh always God. been, that's <laughs> always God. been, that, oh, yeah, that's always been, always been my name. But I, I did play in one league where, I, and I never, I think only one season I ever had to be on any of my team. And so it was the Brady Bunch. So I, I like, Brady's a good name for those things. So I like, I like the Slim Brady, or the real Slim Brady. Or, yeah, I like it. I had another Brady one, but I didn't include it. But if, you, if you're if you on the Brady train, uh, what about Dude Looks Like a Brady? It's a little 80s reference for Dude you. Looks Like a Brady, yeah. Okay, a little Aerosmith. Not as funny as the uh, real Slim Brady. No. I, I, that's why I put the first one. I thought it was better. But uh, what about uh, Quiet and Go Seek? That was not bad. Clyde and go seek. Yeah. Not my best. Mm, four, maybe. Uh, what about how I met Cap, your mother? Oh, I like that one. I like that, that one I like because that's a guy I'll draft. Um, yeah. and, and, I, and I enjoyed that show. So, yeah, I'm there. Uh, this is a guy I like. What about a two-point conversion? 
Tua point conversion. Well, I'll never have Tua on my team. He's one of those 12 that I won't. Um, yeah. I, I, I'll give it a five. Right in the middle. I'll give it a five. What about uh, Judge Judy for Jerry Judy? Oh, I like Oh, I like that. I like that, too. Judge 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 Judy, is that what it was? Yep, Judge Judy. Judge Judy. I like it. I like it. Six. Solid. All right. What about Aaron and out with Aaron Rodgers? Um, I I used that in one of my leagues last year. I had Aaron Rodgers. So, yeah, I like it. That's a, uh, I'll go seven and a half on that one. That's a strong one. All right. This is the last one. Now, it'd be funnier. It'd be funnier if it was A.A. Ron uh, a. A. from that. A.A. Yeah. A. A. Ron from that. Yep. Uh, Key, key appeals uh, yep. skit. That was, yeah. Hey, hey, bro. What about uh, Sherlock Mahomes? I like Sherlock Mahomes. I'll give that one a 7 too. I, I'd never heard that one before. And then I had Roland rolling with Mahomes. Rolling with Mahomes? That's a good one. Yeah. Um, what about last one? And I know this is a guy you're probably not drafting, but uh, what about Living on a Prater? For Matt Prater, the kicker. It's, it's dumb. I just like the name goes. Away. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not dumb. I'm just. I got to think about them because if I don't get an instant reaction on it, I, I, I have to now. Um, and I think it's because I uh, way back, uh, Le'Veon. I had Le'Veon on a prayer back when I had Le'Veon Bell a ton of years ago. So disappointed you. So you're like, no. He, he no 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 he no we won that we won that year. Le- oh, Le'Veon, that was that was no that was Pittsburgh Steelers in his peak. Um, Le'Veon on a prayer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Killer bees, yep. Yeah, those were the good. Those were the good. Those were good days. So those are all the names I have for you. Uh, just kind of some ideas for you guys for some creative team names. All right, let me let me ask you. Let me ask you a couple. Because I'm drafting this guy. If if no one else takes him away from me, because I told you he's going to be, he's your he's your superstar wide receiver, your breakout this year. McLaur- McLaurin F one. I like it. All right, this one. This is for our Bears fans. Kemet the Frog, <laughs> or Haley's that's Kemet, dumb. or Haley's that's Kemet. That's dumb. I like that's it's dumb. like dumb, but I like yeah. Kemet. It's okay to be. You know what? Yeah. This is your time to be fun and creative with your. Fe- you know. Yeah. Um, I was going to give you one about J.K. Dobbins, but he's really not, he's not going to be playing this year. Um, Brady Gaga. Since we're yeah. on the Brady train, the Brady the Brady ones are always good. They're always good. All right, <laughs> this one actually is too real. Um, all bark, no bite. Ooh, see that one stings a little bit because uh, I had to take <laughs> fine one my other leagues. So all right, again, and this is the final, final, final one because I also might drop this guy and I might I might use this now that I, now that I'm reading it. Um, this is if you have Nick Chubb as Chubby Chasers. It's good, right? right. Yeah. Some I think I, I give I give it an I give it an eight. All right, that, that's it for fantasy fluent. Um, we did. Let me ask you one other piece because we talked about trades, and you know, kind of off before we started recording. Um, you know, I know there's specific trades that you were asking about that were positions and draft picks, but I got uh, I, I did get someone ask me, hey, what about like when you're trading? What, what's a strategy for trading just in general? So let me answer that question um, um, for for Hassan, who's the person who sent that in. So position. So I think you have to trade from a position of strength. So if you only have one good wide receiver, don't trade your one good wide receiver unless you're getting two back, right? So what I mean by that is if you only have one good wide receiver that you're comfortable with, you hopefully have three running backs right or a backup quarterback like i said where i would take you know take one just to trade them so you know if you have three running backs always try to trade from a position of strength where you say hey okay i've got three so i can give up one so that now i can have two good running backs and two good wide receivers so always kind of from a position of strength you should set your trades then look at players that you may have targeted in your draft and didn't get and figure out ways where you can get them so some of the ones that come to mind Right, Jacksonville running back James Robinson. If you don't get him, right, you can start to target him, see where the weakness is is in that other team, and say, "Hey, I know that that person needs X. I want James Robinson. What can I do to fulfill that that need for them?" 
McLaurin, as I mentioned, the Washington wide receiver. Uh, Denver, I, you know, now that they n- named Teddy Bridgewater the, court, the 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 QB one there in Denver, I'm I'm I've bumped up the wide receivers in Denver. I would trade away. I hate to say this, but as long as Andy Dalton's there, see what you can get for any wide receiver in Chicago, not named Allen Robinson. Keep it on. Um, yeah, keep Robinson no matter what. Um, the Rams, now that they have Sony Michelle, does that? You know, you, you're really high on Daryl Henderson because of the Cam Akers injury, and then they bring in Sony Michelle. So just be careful. Look, it's not to say that he's not good. There. It's just you can get an upgrade because people people have this name cachet, right? And so don't look at the big. You don't have to have the big name player to win fantasy. So if you can get some thinking. Oh, I heard Daryl Henderson's gonna have a huge year. You can trade that for someone who you statistically would probably be better do that uh indianapolis i'd be scared of the running backs there i'm not sure about their offensive line so those are the things Just from a position of strength and and re, be targeted with you know and be fair in your trades like no one no one likes hey here's three guys i just picked off waivers uh can you give me patty, patty mahomes no yeah. even, i could have yeah. got those three guys off the waivers yeah. too six players doesn't if the players aren't doing anything you just sit on the bench they have no value if you're yeah, more a- more players. the The only time, the only time more players m- kind of make sense is if you've had a guy who you know, or a team that lost some players to injury and they need two or three, and and you're in a league where, hey, the the, the waiver wire is really slim pickings. That's different. But try to make your try to make your trades fair and trade from a position of strength. And and just like in the draft, don't reach, don't go all in on one player because with fantasy. Need a full a full roster. So on that note, send uh, make a follow and ping us so you don't miss an episode. We're going to do this every single week. Send in your questions and comments um, down below the comments, or send your questions to Anthony K at sportsfluent.com. Remember to follow us Instagram, Twitter, TikTok at sports underscore fluent. Until next week, for myself and Mike DeFran, be fluent. Hey.